thank you pramod uh, my pleasure to join this conclave and my congratulations for having hosted a large network of diplomats politicians social workers and everybody in this process uh, uh, first of all uh, uh, let me have best wishes for this conference uh, conclave uh I start with uh, Nepal US relationship and uh, I would uh, to some extent also delve on how we have been collaborating on addressing the issue of covid the pandemic we all are facing uh, the humanity of 21st century is facing uh, we have a relationship with USA which is uh, more than 7 decades old Uh, and the building blocks of our uh, bilateral relationship starts with uh, uh, US and Nepal having have established a diplomatic relationship back in the 50s exactly in the year 1947 uh, and then uh, exchange of uh, embassies being established in Washington and also in Kathmandu and in between uh, uh, USA supporting Nepal to be to Nepal's membership to the United Nations. Uh, so this is uh, before 60s that we developed our relationship, but uh, from 1960s onwards, we have a series of global, regional, and national developments. Uh, I think we have been together in all these developments. Uh, Nepal has overcome uh, different stages of political changes. uh the change of 1960 the change of 1990 the change of 2006 and of late the change of 2015 in all these courses uh usa has been supporting nepal's uh, path for democracy and development and well-being of nepali people uh this is the um, bill- Uh, apart from a uh, political diplomatic level of relationship we have very strong economic relationship that builds into a kind of a development cooperation that we have and the development cooperation coming from different schemes including that from USAID uh, it goes uh, also to more than 70 decades of relationship uh, and then uh, there are uh, other areas where uh, we have been collaborating each other one of them being uh, trade uh, although at the moment uh, nepal's uh, trade with the uh, usa is not a big amount but uh, in terms of our total exports uh, usa has a significant place here put our trade through different uh, mechanisms and facilities and i do hope that uh, with the proper implementation of tipa Uh, with the implementation of duty free access to nepali uh, garments uh, and the handicrafts to usa and some other trade facilitation measures would also enhance our trade relation uh, usa is one of our major source of foreign direct investment as well and it has been supporting uh, it has been sending uh, savings and capital to nepal in investment in several areas uh beside that we do have a lot of relationship uh, through tourist uh, movements uh, us is a good destination for the pals tourism industry and uh, despite uh, covid being the case uh, we used to have a very good uh, inflow of tourists from us to nepal uh let me touch upon other areas of our bilateral relationship which really build uh, the relationship is stronger that is people to people relationship and uh, the people to people relationship starts with uh, us um, uh, peace corps volunteer serving nepal uh, right from uh, 60s and, and they have been working in our rural areas in water supply in rural development in agriculture and in, in schools and in several other areas where uh, we do have uh, people to people contact and co- cooperation Uh, between two countries uh, the diversity visa system uh, started by us is another opportunity to have people to people relation because uh, many nepalis have got the opportunity to be settled in usa through the diversity visa uh, more to that uh, the accommodation of uh, a large number of uh, nepali speaking bhutanese in usa which were refugees in nepal for decades is also a kind of um, uh, gesture that 
establishes our relationship to be uh, even stronger. Uh, more to that, uh, the humanitarian kind of support that the USA has been providing to Nepal at the time of disaster or pandemic is memorable. Uh, in, uh, in the past earthquake of 2015, uh, the humanitarian assistance from USA was uh, significant and very timely. And also in this pandemic, uh, the relationship has gone even stronger and the US support to Nepal in addressing COVID has been much more significant to Nepal. I'll come to that point in a while. Uh, but uh, let me just uh, go to the details of um, uh, this kind of collaboration. How do we see the future of our bilateral relation? I think that's the most important part of this, of this discourse. First, the building block of our um, bilateral relationship is Nepal's foreign policy. Uh, which believes in sovereign equality, which believes in non-alignment, which believes in um, global peace and harmony, and uh, which believes in the principles of Panchasil and non-interference included. And, and that uh, U.S. honoring our uh, geopolitical situation and also uh, U.S. Uh, also being partner in this um, global peace process uh, is one aspect where I see a lot more space for further and future collaboration. In particular, Nepal's contribution to the uh, peacekeeping process through our security personnel uh, is uh, noteworthy. And Nepal is currently the third country to have served uh, the peacekeeping process in different uh, conflict ridden countries. So in that, I think uh, if we have a common agenda of global peace and development, Nepal is contributing a lot uh, to that, and uh, USA is supporting Nepal uh, also to our military to build capacity to better serve in the peacekeeping process. Uh, we do have military collaboration also in terms of building capacity, visits of high level personnel, uh, military officials, and also some of the field works together, and uh, also some, uh, the, the support from military at the time of crisis and pandemic is also uh, noteworthy. Uh, going further to that, uh, I think uh, we need to have some more uh, work on uh, deepening our economic collaboration. Uh, it starts with uh, the trade concessions that have been uh, provided by USA to Nepal. We have been looking for the renewal of GSP, uh, General System of Reference in Trade, uh, which would uh, enhance Nepal's exports to USA. Uh, we are hopeful of getting into that process after uh, its uh, uh, termination in October this year, but we are hoping for the renewal of it. Uh, we are also hoping for advancement in uh, TIPA, uh, in, uh, Trade and Investment Framework Agreement. Uh, that's one area. We are also working on how we can see private investment opportunities uh, to Nepal being more attractive. Uh, that might include uh, the agenda of avoidance of uh, double taxation. Uh, uh, more to that, uh, I think uh, Nepal is looking for more uh, collaboration with US in terms of uh, tourism promotion. And mountaineering is one good uh, destination uh, at Nepal, and then USA being one of the source countries for mountaineering. Uh, we are also thinking to host uh, the Sagarmatha Sambad, uh, the Mount Everest Conclave, which would uh, attract uh, many people from all over the world. And US is very keen to work with Nepal uh, on this uh, Sagarmatha Sambad, the dialogue on Mount Everest, which focuses on the issue of climate change and how climate change is affecting the, affecting the globe and uh, in, a, in a larger extent, how that is uh, affecting the mountain ecosystem and the melting of the glacier lakes, uh, melting of the peaks and then rising sea level and also creating stress and problem in the uh, island countries. And for that, we need to, we want to have collaboration between the mountain countries and also the island countries, the ocean countries, and in which the USA has a lot of interest. And US uh, letter entry into uh, climate dialogue, I think this is a welcome step also to work together in climate matters. Uh, 
in pandemic of course uh, there are uh, some of the uh, supports coming in uh, through the government channel and also through the um, ngo channel and also from the community organization channel uh, core consignments of usaid supported um, uh, material supply health supplies have reached nepal which has been helpful to the health workers and also to save to save people from the pandemic uh, there are uh, some initiatives uh, going on the vaccine uh, supply as we know the biden administration has uh, announced uh, 80 million doses of vaccine and 25 million doses was announced earlier another 55 million doses is uh, announced on june 21st Uh, of those announcement uh, asia pacific countries are altogether getting 23 million doses uh, uh, among uh, asia pacific countries and nepal is looking forward to get a uh, fair share of the doses also because nepal is one of the most uh, vulnerable countries to uh, this pandemic uh, the income level being low uh, open market procurement uh, may not always uh, be supported by the economic uh, rationality Uh, and then uh, the vulnerability in south asia including that in india which calls that uh, we need to address uh, the pandemic uh, in a, in a gamut in south asia and that also calls for more support to nepal in vaccination uh, usa is uh, sensible to that uh, point and hopefully we will be getting more vaccines from usa and although most of it coming from Uh, Cobax, and uh, I hope uh, Cobax uh, modality will be able to serve some of the Nepal's requirement on vaccination. Uh, there are also supports coming to Nepal through USAID in uh, health infrastructure, and I appreciate uh, USAID's support for the medium and long term health infrastructure, which could be able to address similar kind of pandemic in coming years as well. so uh with this i think uh, the the political economic relationship and us uh, understanding our uh, non aligned current policy uh, and also being uh, sensitive to our geopolitical sensitivity uh, and then extending its arms uh, to economic development and having people to people relationship uh, is a building block to our relationship and that is manifested in the Uh, in the millennium challenge corporation support to nepal which is uh, one of the landmark support to nepal one of the highest bilateral support to nepal and if the parliament of nepal ratifies the compact perhaps it would be one of the uh, largest bilateral cooperation that uh, has been that nepal has been getting so far so we are very closely looking into the progress on mcc and uh, with that uh, we will be able to have our Uh, major bottleneck in transmission lines addressed and that would also enable us to export power if we have excess in supply uh, so with this i think uh, in in future uh, addressing covid and then rebuilding our bilateral relationship and then uh, forging forging uh, collaboration in uh, multilateral fora like in the world bank in wto or in world health organization Uh, or a similar other uh, for a maybe a good uh, point to build our relationship further so i see uh, a kind of uh, strong bilateral cooperation going forward in coming days uh, pramod ji let me just stop here and, uh,